What's up guys, I got a brand new video for you today and today we're gonna to take a look at vintage lenses and more importantly contact Zeiss lenses and why I started shooting on these guys at the start of this year and why I chose contact Zeiss because there's tons of other amazing vintage lenses out there but this is the route I chose to go down and uh, the lenses that I chose to build my kit with and there's others I want to add to my kit because once you start looking at vintage lenses and modding them it's a rabbit hole that you can't escape. So here's a lowdown on contact Zeiss lenses. They were first developed in the mid 1970s. West Germany based Carl Zeiss teamed up with Japan based Yashica to design this new system. Actually I don't really want to get into the nitty gritty details. Make sure to watch out my buddy Mark's amazing video on the history of contact Zeiss and how things unfolded. Also a big shout out to him for helping me out with this stuff because I didn't know anything and now I know a lot and I can also make recommendations to people. Okay so here's the main reason why these lenses are so popular for video. It's because they use the same coatings and glass as the Zeiss Super Speed cinema lenses which have been used on tons of films like The Shining. So they share similar characteristics to the Zeiss Super Speeds. These lenses are over 40 years old and they still look amazing and feel like new and I think part of that is because I bought lenses that were mint condition and clearly these were cared for their whole lives. When it comes to build quality, they're basically all metal. They have extremely smooth focus rings and a long throw which makes them amazing for focusing in video. So build and optics aside, they're way more affordable than Zeiss Super Speeds, obviously. And once you mod them by swapping out the lens mount, declicking the aperture, you basically have an affordable set of cinema lenses at the fraction of the cost of just one Zeiss Super Speed. And if you mod them yourself, it's super easy and cheap. And I'll show you that in a bit. But the four lenses that I currently have are the Distagon 18mm F4 MMJ, and that costs around $750 Canadian. The Distagon 28mm F2.8 MMJ, and it's around $450 Canadian. Next, I have the Planar 50mm F1.4 MMJ, and it's cheaper, it's around $380. And the last lens I picked up was the Planar 85mm f1.4 MMJ and it's the most expensive, it was about $800 Canadian. These are all their current prices for mint condition lenses like I have and that's without factoring in the modding of the lenses. Each lens is going to cost around $100 to $150 to mod. This kit's not complete yet and there's a lot of lenses I want to switch up and maybe purchase in the future but right now it's pretty good. It covers pretty much everything I want to shoot from 18 millimeters up to 85. I love the look of these lenses. They're actually really sharp for lenses of this age. I'm shooting with the 28 millimeter F 2.8 right now. Looks good. I mean, shooting in 4K, it's no problem. And I can even assume that shooting in 8K, it won't be that bad either. But they aren't razor sharp like brand new lenses. And that's actually kind of what I love about them, to be honest. They have a nice smooth look to them without being insanely sharp. And it's the little imperfections that they have, like some of the dust inside them and the flare that they have. They're not overly contrasty and they have a nice bloom in the highlights and they look great on skin. So taking a look at the characteristics of these lenses, the 50mm f1.4 has strong chromatic aberrations on the highlights on high contrast situations like this, but once I stopped it down to f5.6 you can see it kind of goes away. Next I want to show the focus breathing because it's really good for these types of lenses and this is the 18mm f4 and you can see there's not a lot of focus breathing. Then jumping over to the 28mm f2.8, it has a slight bit of focus breathing but it's not that intense. This is also at its closest minimum focus distance. Next to 50mm f1.4, you can see that it has very little focus breathing and it has a nice smooth transition between the focal planes. Next moving to the 85mm f1.4, it also has very little focus breathing which is really nice on a lens like this, but it also suffers from heavy chromatic aberration and high contrast situations like this. So maybe I've convinced you to look into buying some used camera gear, which is a good segue into today's sponsor, Gear Focus. Gear Focus is an awesome site to buy and sell used camera gear. So if you have 
an old camera or a lens laying around, you need to make some extra cash, Gear Focus is a good place to start. Or if you're just looking to buy a new camera or a lens, maybe try buying something used, you might get a better deal. So once you've set up an account with Gear Focus, you can start listing your items. You need to make sure that you take some good quality images of your items so that the buyer knows exactly what they're getting. Then fill out the description, category, and price you're looking to get for your item. And once you're done, your item will be listed. It's that easy. The buyer and seller can actually message each other or ask more questions about the sale, which is super helpful. I've actually sold a ton of stuff on there now and it's been great not having the hassle of selling stuff in person. So I currently put up some ND filters and I might list some other lenses soon. And it's just awesome knowing that there's a place to sell and buy used camera gear safely. Gear Focus handles all the transaction and money side of things so you know you're safe compared to selling gear in person through Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, especially now since we probably shouldn't be meeting in person anyway. Gear Focus takes a small 3.5% transaction fee per sale, which is so much better than eBay's insanely high fees. So make sure to check out my shop at gearfocus.com, link in the description. See you there. So when you're looking at buying these lenses and you're looking at the description, a little dust is normal. It's not gonna be a massive concern. What you really need to watch for is haze or fungus on the inside. That usually indicates that it probably has moisture inside and that fungus is actually gonna get worse over time. So unless you wanna take the lens apart and clean it, I'd stay away from that. But that's usually gonna indicate that the price is a little bit lower, so be aware of that. There's also another big factor with these contact Zeiss lenses, and that's where it was made. The lenses have slightly different designs and the MMJ or Japanese version is slightly newer and is kind of more sought after because it has a more circular hexagonal bokeh, where the AEG German version has more of a ninja star bokeh. Obviously, you're only gonna see this if you stop the lens down, but it does make the MMJ version a little bit more valuable because it's people want more circular bokeh usually. An easy way to tell them apart just visually is that the f-stop, the last number, is actually green on the MMJ versions where it's not on the AEG version. So make sure to look out for that. I've been shooting on these lenses pretty much on every project this year and I've been loving the look of these lenses. Unfortunately, a lot of stuff I'd love to show you guys hasn't been released yet and I can't show you, which sucks because I know it's some of my favorite stuff that I've shot this year but it just hasn't been released. So maybe I'll make another cinematography breakdown on those videos. But for the price on a set of these lenses, even after modding them, still way cheaper than just buying one beat up Mazai Super Speed. So you can't really go wrong. And since I've modded them with the EF mount on the back here, declick the aperture, put a gear focus ring on it, change the front filter diameter to 77 millimeter. I basically have a set of mini cinema primes. Okay, so getting into modding these lenses, it's super easy. It's not that hard. I'll give you a quick rundown on how to do it. Each lens kind of has a different quirk about them, but they're basically all the same. So the lens that I'm showing in this mod here is the 50 millimeter F1.4. The first thing I did was take my small Phillips screwdriver and break free all the screws that haven't moved in years. Be careful when you're doing this because they could break. One smart way to do this is to actually apply heat with a soldering iron and then unscrew them. Then all you have to do is pull up on the rear mount and that'll actually remove the aperture ring. I actually wanted to show the camera how clean this lens actually was on the inside. So to declick the aperture, there's actually a spring-loaded ball inside this aperture ring mechanism. And typically you need tweezers to pull it out, but mine actually just randomly fell out on its own. You can see here in my hand. And there's actually the spring that held it in that we need to remove as well. We don't need that. This is actually all that was involved in declicking the aperture, but I did feel that it didn't have enough friction and that it was gonna easily go out of place. So I put a piece of electrical tape in there and some heavy duty synthetic grease. And then I put the aperture ring back on and tested it out and it actually felt amazing. There was a nice bit of friction there and I wasn't worried about it moving from where I set it at. So now I'm putting the old mount back on because the new mod actually goes over top of the old mount and I'm just screwing it back down but we're leaving those four screws out of it because we get brand new screws that actually come with the lens mount and that's because they need to be a little bit longer to go through the new metal. Then I took the new mount and I aligned it with the four screw holes and there's also a notch cut out so you know exactly where it needs to go. Then I put some Loctite on each one of the screws so that the screws don't back out. So that's all that's involved in converting this to an EF mount, super easy to do. Now I'm actually gonna put the gear ring on it. These are custom made gear rings that fit exactly to these lenses. I'll put links in the description. They just pressure fit over top of the old ring.
I also got front lens rings for all these lenses so that all be the same diameter. So this converts us to 77 millimeter inside diameter and 80 millimeter outside diameter. And I did this for all my lenses so they all have the same size front diameter. Thanks for getting this far. And if you're watching this far, you're probably interested in this kind of stuff. So hopefully you've enjoyed it. I feel like my kit's not really complete yet. I don't really love the 18 millimeter and the 28 millimeter that much. The 28's pretty good, it's what I'm shooting on right now. So I'm actually thinking of selling both of those lenses and buying the crazy overpriced 21 millimeter f2.8. That lens looks amazing. I don't know why it costs so much, but it's kind of in the sweet spot between the 18 and the 28. And I just feel like 21 millimeter would look really good on the gimbal. It's also super hard to find those lenses and the ones that are available right now are around $2,300 Canadian. So they're super expensive for an old lens like that, but that's kind of where I'm headed right now. But those are my eventual goals. And you know, I don't really have the money right now to buy any more lenses. And I can pretty much cover anything I got right now with what I have. So let me know if you're shooting with vintage lenses. I know a lot of people shoot with Helios or Takamar because they like the look, but also a lot of people shoot with Leica R lenses because they're super popular, but they're also really expensive. I also want to mention that I got all my mods from SimMod. Super easy place to get everything you need. Everything's laid out really nicely. And I'll put links down in the description of what I got. That's it for me. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to check out Mark's videos too. He makes some amazing videos on vintage lenses. But that's it for me. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. And I'll see you guys in the next one.